Hi, the last one here from Aspen Magazine. And this video, in many ways, has been inspired by Pete Pardo from Sea of Tranquility. He's recently done an absolutely fantastic video um, answering the question, why does he still buy CDs? And I get asked a similar question, and I know I cover multiple formats here, but I felt that it was time for me to do a video like this. And, you know, Pete, Pete's video is full of grace. It's not kind of saying this is what I do and it's the best way. It's subjective. It's his own personal opinion. And he, as Pete says in the video, you know, however you consume music, if it's right for you, it's right for you. So this is going to be um, my my kind of answer to that. Um, and I will touch on some of the things that, that Pete mentioned because we are different in how we consume music, but equally we're very much the same. So as, as I go along with this video, I think you'll understand what I mean by that. So for me, why do I buy CDs and vinyl or why do I buy physical music at all. And as I've said many times on, my, on this channel, on the website and wherever else, I like to feel part of the artist's journey, a part of the story, um, a part of the music. And having the, the album in my hands, the, the item, brings me closer to the story that streaming can never do. I do stream. Um, uh, Pete says in his video he doesn't and he uses YouTube to discover new things. Um, my wife is a professional musician, so we have like artist pages for Spotify and Apple. But regardless to that, I use streaming like the radio. And just like the radio, it's on, but it's impersonal. I, I hear tracks, but I, I'm not, I can't physically grab hold of them. But I, I don't mind um, the fact that Spotify will suggest something to me because sometimes it's helped me discover things that I would never have found before. Or if I see something coming on the release schedules and I don't know what it's like, I'll use a combination of things, um, you know, for Spotify and related bands and, and YouTube and also Apple Music as well, which I'm going to come back to as well with how I carry my music around as well and listen to it in the car because in the UK where I am it's impossible to get buy a car that's got a CD player in it now so you know how I how I get around that as well but I grew up with vinyl um, I have an age when that's I started buying singles and then I started to buy albums when I started work I spent every available penny I could on buying records and they were expensive you know, they're about three or four pounds. You might think, three or four pounds. Yeah, but my salary was about 20 quid. So they're like 25% of my salary. And so I had to really pick and choose, you know, what I bought. And, you know, so friends would like lend records to it, you know, we'd lend records to each other. We'd tape them, see whether we wanted to buy it ourselves. And then we'd consume it. I mean, over and over again, because we didn't like buy, like you can buy like, 10 CDs at once now, uh, whatever, buy one album a month. So that album was all you'd listened to for those four weeks. So you knew it inside out, you knew who engineered it, who produced it, you know what third track on side two was, you knew everything. Uh, you know, it's just what, one, one of those things really. And so I did that right up until the late eighties when CDs arrived and I it was quite late buying a CD player because Although the CD players were fairly cheap, about hundred pounds, um, the the discs themselves were not. They were about fifteen to eighteen quid, which was a lot of money when albums were about, you know, seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. And then when the record companies wanted everyone to buy CD, of course, vinyl vinyl uh, records were about. I remember my local Virgin Records were about. Four pounds sometimes in the sale, two ninety nine, one ninety nine. They just the shops just wanted to get rid of them, and so everyone was just moving over to CD and starting to buy the same stuff they'd own on vinyl because it sounded so spectacular. And I'm going to come on to that as well, the sound and uh, CD versus vinyl, um, which I think is a long lost argument. Now I, I, I really do, but it, uh, there was a period in the. Uh, early 90s, which in the UK um, I call the Great Vinyl Call. And 
Many of you know that connected to this channel and the Now Spinning Magazine website is a private Facebook um, group um, where like-minded collectors hang out. And many of us um, remember this period in the 90s when a lot of us got rid of vinyl records. Because they was just moving over to CD, I wasn't playing records anymore, um, and, I was re and I was about to move house, we're going to move to Cornwall, and I thought, why am, why am I keeping half this stuff? I don't play it, I've already got this one on CD, so why do I need it on vinyl? And so I made a decision that anything I had on CD, or anything that was on vinyl that was kind of like wounded, you know, a bit scratched, uh, cover was a bit bent, I got rid of them. I didn't sell them, I just got rid of them. You know, literally took them to charity shops by the bag load. Didn't see anything of it. And, um, and in fact, the records I did keep when we moved house, they just went in the garage where the humidity wasn't great for vinyl, I must say. Um, but I wasn't playing them. I wasn't buying it. I was just purely, purely CD. And CD is still my format of choice. It's still the format I go to first. Although I um, believe that all formats exist and coexist in great harmony, um, I've, I still really support the CD. So on my weekly chart watch video, the reason why I talk about CD sales and vinyl sales is because I know in the music industry, it's all about vinyl. Everyone's pushing vinyl, saying vinyl's fantastic. And I just want to address that every week to say, actually, for instance, um, in my recent chart watch video, the number one album at the time of doing this video is uh, Sam Ryder um, with his with his album called There's Nothing But Spaceman. And he sold 25,000 copies to get to number one, of which 20,000 of those, 20,000 were physical vinyl, sorry, physical releases. What am I saying? And 16,000 of that 20,000 physicals out were CD. So without those CD sales, he wouldn't have got to number one. And that's been the same for every UK album number one, literally for the last three months that I've been collecting stats. And I'm going to cover that in a future video. So CDs are doing really well and the physical music market is nearly 28% of all album sales at the moment. And it was about 15% a year ago. And so a lot of people love um, physical music but it's my kind of love of the CD was because they were small they were easier to uh, store there was no crackles there was no clicks there was no jumping there was no there were low maintenance um, it was easy for me to rip onto a computer and, and stick on my iPod at the time and carry it around with me um, it, the and of course, the cost started to change with CDs. You know, you had back catalogue stuff at ten ninety nine or nine ninety nine, and the full price ones were about fifteen quid, and the prices kept dropping until shops like Fop were selling back catalogue for five quid, and new albums came out at nine ninety nine, which they roughly are now. And of course, there was the argument that you know vinyl had, you know, all the the book that you could sit there and read the notes and everything. A lot of records had very little information. You know, especially by the time we got to the 80s, they were just single covers with the song titles on the back, bit of production, no lyrics. And most CD booklets came with a lot more than that. So actually the CD, although it was smaller and you might need glasses for some of the print, actually contained more information um, than the vinyl counterpart, even, it, even if it existed. And of course, CDs came with extras, and then if there was a vinyl one, you missed those off, or if there's a compromise, which you've just seen with the recent Black Sabbath um, vinyl editions, where they've had to decide what to include on the second disc and what to leave off, whereas the CD comes with the whole concert, for example. And of course, they're low maintenance. You pick one up, and you open it up, and you take out the CD, and you put it on, and it will sound the same as it did the last time you you put it on any, whatever else, and it will play on anything. You don't need to do any, like a Chinese tea making ritual, where you decide to clean it, polish it, and everything before you put it on. You just put it on, and it just plays for 70, 80 minutes sometimes. And you get, you know, it's a chance to, you know, and, that, and that's how I've kind of listened to music for, for many, many, many years. 
And then when I started Now Spinning Magazine, uh, because and that's the other thing, what the, the Facebook group, the reason why that exists is that on Facebook, where I, well, from where I was kind of my perspective, was that there were CD only collectors groups and there were vinyl only collectors groups. And I didn't really want to be in something that just said, this is what I listen to and we don't talk about that. Because I thought, well, I don't listen to much vinyl, but I've got nothing against it. And I've, this CD versus vinyl argument, this clickbait that you still see on videos is one I saw just the other day. It really doesn't make any sense, does it? You either like what you like and that's it. There isn't any rules here. These people that sell CDs better than vinyl, vinyl's better than CD, it's all digital, you know, there's no analog record. Does it really matter? Um, I don't think it does. The reason I say that is I started to replace some of the vinyl albums that I gave away all those years ago, just cheap on eBay, you know, be five quid, six quid in a charity shop. And I think, I, you know, I wanted, I wanted it back. And I do buy vinyl now, but it's a special... It's a special release or and a band that I really like. Um, for instance, I I bought Soen's new Atlantis album on CD and the DVD. Comes with a little booklet and everything. But because I love this band so much, I also bought um, I also bought the vinyl. So that was kind of like a luxury item in a way. But I, I, and sometimes I do that. It's a bit like many of you know. I'm a huge Deep Purple fan, and so for Deep Purple, I always buy the, the CD, and I will buy the vinyl. But 90% of the time, I'm quite happy with the CD. And the other thing is with CDs, of course, is the, the box sets. And I'm jumping around here, so bear with me. Um, storage. I live in the UK, and uh, uh, you know, Peter, Steve Tranquil is obviously in the USA. And um, a lot of the, my subscribers from now Spinning Magazine are in the US. And houses are a lot bigger over there than they are here. And so I, I do look at envy, you know, when I see people sitting in front of custom-built CD racks. I mean, Pete Pardue's collection behind him just looks spectacular. I've got thousands and thousands of CDs, but they're everywhere. Um, they're all over, the, all over the house where I can actually put them. And and the thing is that all of us, all of us collectors, usually share our homes with other humans. And not everybody wants to see racks and racks of CDs covering every aspect of a wall. Um, so there's always a compromise. Now, I'm very, very lucky in that my wife is a professional violinist and musician, and she also collects music. Now, if I just lean forwards just to show you this oh, this is one of this is one of sue's box sets this is a who is it it's a isaac perlman's um violinist it's one of his box sets you um, anyone watching this was thinking it's truth because you're so used to seeing rock box sets with about 20 cds in max or some mostly 14 or 12 albums or whatever of the career this is 72 cds in here imagine that as a vinyl box set it would be impossible. 72 vinyl albums in a box. Um, I recently bought um, a, a vinyl box set that has 11 albums in and it weighs a ton. So that would be impossible. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's, that's just that one guy's entire career. It isn't. This is a nook. Sue also has this, which has um, 25 um, CDs in, also by uh, um, Isaac Perlman, sorry, and so that's another label he was on. Twenty, that'd be a twenty-five album box set. It would be, it'd be impossible. And then for me personally, another seventy-two album box set. It would be Miles Davis. That's impossible um, to put on vinyl as well. So CDs are perfect for, for for pulling together an artist's entire catalogue. I've got another one in front of me, um, Herbie Hancock. Uh, how many's that gone? 34, 34 albums and a giant book that comes with it. You know, so these kind of 
these kind of booklets, well, they're books, aren't they? They're just fantastic, fantastic, and they don't they don't take up that much space. Now, some people, um, and Pete mentioned this in his video, will say that you know all this stuff, and you're talking about racks, and yeah, wouldn't you rather just just stream it, or just like you don't need it anymore? I think in the UK, you know, there's there's an argument for that because our houses are tiny, especially new homes. But I remember when I was young, um, my my mum used to say when she used to go around to people's houses, if you go around to someone's house and they don't have any books in it, it's not a home. And I know what she meant. This is going back a bit to the this is going back a lot to the to the seventies. That you go and if some you went into someone's house and they didn't have a book bookcase. You had no connection to what that they were into, or you know, it was a conversation piece was a was like a bookcase with what books and stuff. You need to go up and look at stuff. And I think as as music, at the art, the the work, the art of the album took off really in the seventies. What well, it did for me, going around to houses, and I'd be looking around to see where, where the hi fi was, um, the out the record collection. And then we went through into CD collections and it gave you an entry point to kind of looking at things on shelves and say, oh, you've got this or... And it, it is part of, it is part of what makes a home. I know it's like it's something if you've got children and there are some people that just tidy away all the toys. So they're not, it's almost as if they don't exist. When the kids go to bed, you just tidy everything away. Um, a home isn't supposed to be a sterile place where everything is put away you know records leaning against the bottom of the bookcase or a few cds out to me it's it's kind of like life life is movement life is fluid it's you know and that and that, that to me is again, again part of it i know all of us struggle with 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 storage and stuff and and as i got as i started to buy more records they came in from the garage and um because they I start. I fell in love with them again, but I have. But CDs are still a, a massive part. As I said, it's my format of choice, but vinyl, but vinyl is connected to that. I wouldn't have one or the other. And I think the video I mentioned just about um, CDs are better than vinyl, and this was on a CD only uh, Facebook forum. I would say about eighty percent of the comments to this post were people who bought both. Because I think if you're into physical media and buying physical music, you just you just like it really. But I know that some people prefer one or the other. But there's no, it doesn't matter, you know. It, it just doesn't matter at all. Uh, the, the one thing I'd I'd like to mention though that that Peter's made me think about. Pete talks about um, when he puts an album on, he plays it all the way through. He feels the respect for the artist that they put it together in that way. And he plays it all the way through, you know, you know, from first track to the last track, and he'll live with that, you know, and so he doesn't like cherry pick certain tracks or anything. And when he he, he doesn't like the idea of uh, not, not not say he doesn't like, but that's his preference, so he doesn't press shuffle on his CD player or anything like that. I'm I'm I must admit I am different to that. Um, but that's, I think it's the way that we've kind of grown up or how we've approached music really. Because in the, in the seventies and eighties, I used to do mixtapes for my mates. We'd go around to, um, you know, different pubs and whoever was driving, we would do tapes for each other. And on these tapes, we'd put tracks on for albums we bought that we thought our mate, whoever it was, may not have been aware of. So it would have about... It'd have about 12 tracks on each side and every there wasn't and each band was different. So literally 24 separate bands or sometimes some bands would be doubled up. But usually it was like one track per band. And that meant going through your albums and playing, recording this track, taking it off, putting another album on, putting the next track or whatever, whichever was your best tracks. And I've, I grew up doing that. And when I had friends round to my house, you know, by the end, of, by the time they went home, there'd be records all over the floor, or later on CDs all over the floor. As I will be taking stuff out, and I'll be playing, um, you know, tracks from. I'll be putting a track on for this one, 
and then taking it off um, for the second track would be a separate CD. And I suppose it's a bit like, um, well, I was getting out to go out um, in the evening. You know, I might put Highway Star on by, um, by Deep Purple from Manager Pan because I wanted to hear that track. Um, but I didn't necessarily, I didn't want to play the whole thing through. If I wanted to play Give Me A Bullet To Bite On by ACDC next, or Space Station Number 5, I didn't, I didn't want to wait until each album had played the way through. I just wanted to put each one on. So as I kind of got myself ready what I was doing, um, I would just literally pick, cherry pick the tracks that really f fitted that moment or that emotional need, what I was going through. And and that's that's how I've used music so um the, the the key thing with that is that i i have used the shuffle button a lot um and that's i mean specifically when i think about my when i first got an ipod and, and now i use apple music and i said i'd come back to this with apple music i've uploaded all my cds well about 90 percent of them thousands of them and I have to say, I love pressing, selecting songs and then pressing random. I absolutely love that. It's about like, it's about 80, 80 90,000 tracks, right? And I press random and I have no idea what's going to come up next. I could actually press a button and it would tell me what was going to play next, but I actually prefer not to know. And it's like having my own radio station where I like everything that's on it and the DJ never interrupts. I do like that. I admit sometimes because it, it is so random, it will play Frank Zappa and then ABBA. And it might be that my ears have adjusted to something and then I think, whoa. Um, <laughs> so I might press, I might tell it to go to the next track if I'm not in the mood for whatever's come up. But I, I do, I do, I do enjoy that i have to say and so yes i do also use playlists as well to just to put things together uh, a bit like, because it to me it's a bit like um it's a bit like a mixtape from from the olden days and that's especially true for the way that you know i i do stream in the car because it hasn't got a cd player at home i don't i don't stream um i play music and going back to what Pete had said, I have altered. So that kind of story then about me literally ending up once I go in a, I, I want to really dive into music and buy within two hours that I'm surrounded by CD cases and um, or vinyl records everywhere and I've got to try and put them all back in the right sleeves. I have dialed back from that a lot as I've got older and I'm more likely now, I have to say, to put something on and let it roll. When I'm traveling, I'll press random play still because it's, it's I've got, as I say, all my music on Apple and I just press random play. Um, and that's the same if I go for walking, if I walk down to the beach, it will be on random play. But in at home, if I'm gonna play something, um, whatever it is, I'm, I am more likely now to play the whole album. Man in Japan? Yeah, but I might miss out um, Ian's drum solo, The Mule. Nothing against that, Ian. I, I love it, but sometimes I'm, you know, the drum solo, I'm kind of thinking, when's strange kind of woman coming on? Um, so so I might just, you know what I mean? So, I, But but overall, I, I, I have started to do that a lot more than I used to. Hi-Fi. Um, I'm very happy with my Hi-Fi. I have upgraded it over the years. It's not... It's not top end. It's good, and I've upgraded my um, my turntable to a good Technics deck. Uh, but again, it's not it's not thousands and thousands. Neither are my speakers. My CD player is actually a CD transport, which is about five hundred quid by Roxanne, and then I've got a DAC, which is all a new thing to me, and that was quite a bit of money. Um, and the sound's fantastic, but I'm not I'm not obsessed with sound. In, it has to be, you know, positioning of where the chair is or whatever. I just like to listen to music. And um, and Pete was talking about where he listens to music the most. And he's got his, his own office, so he's got his own space to do that. I don't have that. Um, as I say, we, you know, we share 
the house with other humans, especially Sue and Dan and Lee, etc. So I have an end of the living room where I do my work and I've got speakers there if I want to listen to music there. Or I've got my um, you know, Bluetooth headphones um, and I've also got, you know, so I do play music also in the main part of the, the house, the main living room. Um, so through the, the main hi-fi, which is also the this is also the same system that uses for films and Blu-ray, etc. But I don't always position myself right in the middle of the speakers. I've just got music on and I'm potting around and doing things. And, and I just have music on. And and I've, I've said this on a separate video. This is very important to me. Because there are times when, I, when I'm quite happy to have silence. Um, because I'm concentrating on something that needs my attention, especially if I'm video editing or obviously recording something. But most of the times I will have music on in the background, a bit like the soundtrack to my life. And then I deliberately pick the music I need for the task that I have to do. And so obviously if it's intense, progressive metal, it isn't going to necessarily help me if I'm trying to write um a, a post or, or um, an, you know, a, a technical, a technical piece of writing because I'll be, I'll be distracted into the, into the music. Um, so it will be something more gentle. It might be instrumental or something. It might be, it might be some jazz or something or some classical music. But then if it's something where I've, it doesn't need so much kind of, of my attention. You know, I'm doing tasks. Then yeah, it will be full on heavy metal or rock and roll, and that will that will suit me. Abs will suit me absolutely fine. It really will. So you know that in a way is 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 how I is how I perceive and listen to music. But as I say, why do I you know going back to the the start of the video? Why do I buy it still? And I'll admit, since I've been doing this, I've probably bought more in the last few years uh, collectively than I've bought for a, for a very very long time. And staying with the CD thing, for, here's, here's a good example. Again, I'm not I'm not saying anything against vinyl because, as I've said, I still buy it. This is um, Deep Purple's 40th anniversary deluxe edition of Machinehead, which included um, was it five CDs? Uh, sorry, four CDs and a, also a DVD, all in little books. You would never, I would never have bought that as a as a vinyl box set because it would have appeared to me to be quite bonkers really um but that is something oh this is this is something that's very important and i wonder if other people feel like this and uh pete didn't didn't, men didn't mention this so this will this will be interesting um to, to what people think as i say i play a lot of music and and i love collecting physical music so why do i buy cds and vinyl sometimes um in fact, when I say sometimes, it's fairly regular. It's a fairly regular thing, is that you know my wife will have the telly on or something, or there's something else going on in the house or something. I am quite happy to literally take a box set off the shelf and just browse through it. And in fact, it doesn't even need to be a box set. You know, take a CD off the shelf and sit down and take it take it out and read the booklet etc and and that to me is really really enjoyable and I'm not actually listening to any music just browsing like picking up a book off the bookshelf just picking up um, a, a record a CD and just reminding myself of the story or the lyrics or something or just taking a few off and looking through them I might sometimes pick up a whole band off the shelf and just go through them and remind myself of the story and even though I'm not listening to it so the so the physical aspect of it why I buy it it goes beyond the music and it is um, the idea of co of collecting of being of having those I did recently the the Jethro Tall Super Deluxe editions all those sets that's a good example sometimes I'll just go up and one after the other I'll just sit down with them and I've gone through them so many times but each time I do that 
I just feel connected. Um, I'm about to do a video on Mot the Hoople, early Mot the Hoople stuff, and I'm going through the Angel Air CDs and looking through the booklets and the pictures. I haven't even played one yet. I haven't played one for ages, but I'm just, I'm just enjoying. I am, I am enjoying the visual and tactile part of my music collection without pressing play on my CD player or dropping the stylus onto the grooves once. I'm absolutely in a, I'm absolutely really happy doing that. I'm really happy having these things around me and just going through them, browsing them and looking at them and putting them back as I am in taking the discs out and putting them on a play and pressing play. I get, I get just as much enjoyment from that. You know, seeing them all together, seeing, you know, Thin Lizzie's output all together on a shelf. I, 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 I just do. I, I, I get a lot of, a lot of pleasure from that. And that's why I buy physical music, because it isn't just about hearing it. Because if it was just about hearing it, I would just press play on Spotify and walk away. I just have the sound. But to me, I want, I want more than that. I want to feel part of it. It reminds me of almost like uh, going back, of being like a, a hunter-gatherer for music, um, where, you, where for me, I had to catch the bus into, into Birmingham, go to the record shop, go through the racks from A to Z, looking for new things, things that looked exciting, taking a chance, buying them, sitting on the bus on the way home, browsing through the CD or, or the record and coming home and putting it on. There was like an act of going to get it. Now, of course, I can just browse and go click add basket buy. So there's, there's less of a connection until it arrives, until you hear um, the thump, the, the thump on the floor as it comes through the letterbox that something has just arrived and it'll have a CD in it. I still get, I still get a buzz from that. And that's where I think, you know, you record companies that watch this channel and PR agencies and bands, um, and in case you're thinking, well, yeah, it's just this older bloke talking about this stuff. As I've said before, I've gone into two local record shops and the average age of the people browsing the CDs and vinyl are probably between 22 and 28. You know, there's a lot of people out there that now are starting to buy physical music and see that from my own chart, watch stats. You know, people are buying new vinyl, new artists on vinyl and CD. And this is the thing, because as I've read out earlier in this video, you know, number one artist, 24,000 sales, 20 sales of those are physical, 16,000 of those are CD. Because the CD version is probably £10. It's almost an impulse buy. You're walking through, I'll give that a go. It's 10 quid. Vinyl is, needs more thought. And I know some of record labels and shops will say, buy three vinyl albums, 55, 60 quid. That's a weekly shop for food. It's a lot, that's, that's not an impulse, that, an impulse buy that is, you need to think about that. You need to think about that. Whereas the CD, I've heard a couple of tracks. I want that. You know, it sits on, it sits on the rack, you know, and, and I just love the act of doing that. I know some people, um, some people in my Facebook group have started to move their jewel cases into little um, plastic sleeves uh, like these. Uh, this is something that just came in one of these. Um, again, I prefer that. I, I love digipacks. I love. I just love CDs. I just love C. I just love them, and I just love, as I said, the aspect of 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 the physical release. But again, while I've got your attention, um, Mr. Marketing Person from the record companies, we're not silly, and thus those of us that buy physical music. Um, we're not a cash cow. We love things, and on this channel, I'll always review stuff I love. Uh, and I would never, ever um, be disrespectful to a musician or an artist because I know how hard it is, you know, to, to put these things together. But where I do sometimes say how I really feel is on the way things may be being executed physically. And, you know, the, this is a lovely little box set. This is Esoteric and Cherry Red, you know, five, five CDs, a massive booklet, um, gatefold sleeve and all the rest of it. And then you have other ones, five CDs, um, you know, hardly any booklet, no information, you know, 28 pounds, nearly 50 quid. And, and, and so there's, 
you know, us collectors, we are passionate about this. We are passionate about supporting uh, artists by buying something. You know, I'll use Bandcamp. I'll use the artist website. I do use Spotify, Apple Music. I discover, I learn, I listen, and then I buy it. And then I'm connected. And sometimes it will be the CD, and sometimes it will be the album, uh, the vinyl album. Sometimes it will be both. Um, uh, it, it just it just depends. But you know, as um, as Pete said in his video, there's no right or wrong here. The fact is that all of us are music fans, and and those of us that buy physical music, well, all that's where we are the same, because we still have that sense of wonder don't we? Um, a, a buying, have I got anything nearby? I mean, this is a mixed format box set, which I've just, just re recently reviewed. Um, Van de Graaff Generators, the aerosol grey machine, contains the vinyl and the CD and extra stuff. And I'm really into that. I'm into mixed media box sets. I know not everyone might be, but because I see CD and vinyl as the same, it's just supporting the artist. You know, I just love, I just love that choice. I just love that choice. So this isn't about record companies thinking we need to really drive home that we're going to move completely over to vinyl because it's never going to happen. What you've got now is a is an audience who love physical music that like the choice of having both, and um, they're both valid. They are absolutely both valid. And um, do I add any extra down here? The other thing, of course, where um, and Pete mentioned this as well. These are mine. And as much as the streaming giants talk about saying they have 90 million tracks on there or something, there is so much you don't have. And only those of us whose range of musical tastes go in every direction, up, down, sideways and left to right or whatever, know this. Um, I was doing it recently and I was thinking, oh, fancy listening to some budgie while I was away, um, so I thought I'll try and find that after stuff's missing. Or certain tracks won't be there on certain re certain albums, uh, I think on Dwayne albums, a uh, uh, couple of albums, and they greyed out some of the tracks as they hadn't got the license for them. I've got those, it's mine, I can play it whenever I want. Um, and I've got the Budgie albums, and um, I can play them whenever, whenever I want. And if anything goes wrong, this is, how can I explain this? Um, oh, actually, quite easily. This is my backup. These are hardware backups, aren't they? If I am out there with my um, with my phone, which has got all my music on, you could say, kind of in the cloud, uh, if something goes wrong, I can, I can upload another one because this is my hard backup. Um, but when I'm at home, when I could just press go on my Sonos speakers which are all around the house I still love coming down stairs or different parts of the house I've even got a hi-fi in the garage and, and just playing and just physically putting on some music so that is why I buy physical music and it's both CD and vinyl as I said about 90% CD and then 10% vinyl if I see for a good price or something's coming out one of my favourite bands um, Riverside new album coming out soon isn't it I should buy that on CD and vinyl just because just because um, because it's that kind of band to me and I'm really excited about it and I'm excited about hearing the new music and I'm, but I'm excited about feeling and touching and holding and owning that new music because it's all about all of your senses and it's it's all about I use music for my mental health that keeps me um, smiley, happy. Uh, my mindset is is tweaked by what is going on. What I use as a soundtrack around me, depending on you know what I'm what I'm going to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this little ramble, and um, thank you very much for for staying with me and um, and supporting Now Spinning Magazine. Uh, I've really really appreciated it. And the next thing I'm going to do is talk about what box sets we'd like to see reissued um, for the next year, because I did one of these last year before. And also Chartwatch goes out as well. 
and thank you for Pete Pardo and from C Tranquility for inspiring me to, to do this video. And if you ever need a guest for your UK connection, I'm here. Or if you'd like to come on this channel, um, I'd be absolutely delighted. So take care, everybody. Stay safe. Remember, music is the healer and the doctor. Keep spinning those discs. And I shall see you very, very soon.